Wonder Woman 1984 was one of the other trailers that came out of DC fandom at the weekend. We'd seen a little bit of footage from this before, but now we got to see a bit more, and of course there were the panels and there were the discussions that went with it. So that's what we're going to be talking about in this episode of Legends of Podcast. So joining me in the Wave Rider we have... Stuart. Rob. And I'm Liam. Let's jump into it. So we've seen footage from this uh, before. Obviously, we've seen Wonder Woman first appeared in Batman v Superman. Um, and uh, then we got the prequel movie to that, which was Wonder Woman um, in World War I. And um, now we've got the sequel to, uh, to that, which is still a prequel to Batman v Superman. Um, so it's a sequel, but still prequel. A sequel to the prequel. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, we've seen some footage from it. And now we've got this trailer. And in this trailer, I, I mean, one of the standout points for me that we saw last time when we saw some footage, and we saw it right at the beginning of this trailer again, which I think it's so ridiculous that it's cool, is her swinging on lightning. Using the lasso to I mean. swing from lightning across the sky. It's so... So ridiculous that it's I mean, great. They had to outdo Spider Man somehow, so like, right, let's take web slinging <laughs> to another level and let's uh, let's make her fly on like yeah, go on lightning. Yeah, I mean insane. It's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it is pretty good. It's, it is. it's also insane, but uh, yeah, I'll go and see how much <laughs> if it's just that one clip that's gonna be in the film or is she gonna be doing it like loads of times or like just for a like extended <laughs> just like, time. That's how she gets around. And it's yeah. how she wants to come around, she just conjures up a lightning storm. She's like, see ya. Yeah, well, so right at the beginning, <laughs> right, right in this trailer, she sort of does it during the day, and there isn't any lightning. So I don't know what the frick next she uh, wraps onto, but she's sort of running down the street, and then she flicks her lasso into the sky and then takes off. And I'm like, what the hell have you hooked onto? Like, this is real like a Spider Man game where you can just web to the air and fly <laughs> off. Insane. Which, yeah, I did pick up on that as well, but my only fault that I could think on that it was that she threw the lasso to look cool, and then she just flew. Yes. Um, because she can fly why does we she know swing that lightning because <laughs> it's cool <laughs> because she'd seen the Spider-Man movies and she was like that's cool I want to be like Spider-Man and uh, so <laughs> yeah that, that, that must be it <laughs> um, no so one of the other things we got from this trailer is that we'd seen before Steve Trevor who we all saw die in the first Wonder Woman movie and her looking for that photo of him that one photo she has of him was a big part of BVS. that She wanted that photo. And uh, apparently he didn't die um, because we see Steve Trevor in this movie. And from what we got with this footage this time is it seems to kind of make it clear that, no, this is actually Steve Trevor. It's not his grandson, you know, like they did in the, uh, the Wonder Woman TV series um, where you've got the same actor and you're like, how is this possible? Is it exists in different times? You're like, oh, because we're related. Oh, okay. <laughs> cool. It makes sense. Easy. <laughs> Easy. Yeah, yeah it makes it makes a lot of sense. I but, figured they were doing that as like a little n tip of the hat to the old TV series, but no, it's uh, it appears to be the same person. So, what are your thought, you guys' uh, thoughts on that? How's that even possible? It's all of, it's all of it gets explained in the f first trailer, I think. But it's um, oh, I'm gonna forget his name now. The guy who plays the Mandalorian, no, mean, who's, who's the bad Max guy, Maxwell Lord. Maxwell, Lord. Maxwell Lord. Thank you. Yeah. Um, he has some sort of like is it crystal or stone or something. That basically, makes your most desired thing become a reality and i'm assuming her most desired thing is missing steve and wants steve back so he gets i guess materialized or gets transported from the past to the future i'm not too sure but what makes me interesting is is he going to be there one is he, is he is she the only one that can see him so it's like is it in her head that he's there and two he has to be gone by the end of the film because in bvs he's not there like you say and then in the in the um justice league film where Bruce Wayne makes a dig at her about it. She gets really pissed off. So it's like she he's not around anymore. So I guess maybe when when she breaks the stone or something that he then disappears again. But, it um, seems a bit odd to yeah. me though. They're going down the route of having bringing him back into the films because the whole point of her in the first film was that she she fell in love with him and then decided to withdraw from mankind because she couldn't handle that. And then all of a sudden he's back in this, but it's not mentioned. It, it, the problem with putting another film in with him in it. I hope they explain it. I hope they write it in. They, they could do it very well and write it in properly, but it's I think, just it, I, think, be... I, think it, I think it's more of the uh, he's going he's to add the comedy factor to it from, from all the scenes he's been in because he's a man out of time. 
Mm. It, he looks like he's going to be out the comedy value of it. He and she has to well, in the wearing, first one wearing his wearing his parachute pants. <laughs> yes, everyone parachute down. <laughs> I mean, that's quite funny. But like in the first one, he was obviously having to show her around the world and what it's like because he because she was a stranger to it. And then in this one, it's like a role reversal because she's been living with it. And now he's just come, I guess, and he's been, like, he either materializes into that time or he gets transported from the past, I don't know, whichever, but he's going to be there out of time and she has to explain stuff to him now. But again, it has to be something, like, he has to be gone, I mean, maybe the only way she can beat Cheetah um, is to is to break this crystal that Maxwell has, and then she turns back to a normal person, and but then Steve dies at the same time again. I don't know, it's going to be something like that, otherwise it's not going to make much sense to fit in with the other movies. So let's talk about the fact that Maxwell Lord is in it. So we know we've got two baddies in this movie. We have Cheetah, um, which is a standard Wonder Woman uh, baddie, so it's great that we're getting Cheetah in it. Um, and also, I thought it was pretty cool uh, that they actually full-on made her look like a Cheetah, like a humanoid Cheetah, um, mm. by the end. So I was wondering how they were going to go about that. So that's kind of cool. Um, so looking forward to that. And she, she, she starts off humanoid, so she, as Wonder Woman says, like, oh, what did you do? Uh, you know, so clearly she does something, and maybe it's because of Maxwell Lord's crystal that she ends up becoming this uh, mutant. Well, yeah, he, he, um, he says something. He says but, something in the trailer, doesn't he? Something like when someone gets power, all they will do is want more or something. So I'm guessing she must keep. But wanting it seems like she wants. She, she from the both trailers put together, it seems like she's after at least not Diana's life, what she has. So that would include power and respect and wanting to be more. But it's obviously going to go far too far. Yeah. So. so- I'm just gonna take a quick moment to talk about our sponsor, Anchor. If you don't know what it is, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. It literally has everything all in one place. You can record and edit all on your smartphone. You post the episodes to Anchor and it will distribute your podcast across all the main platforms like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can make money from the podcast no matter how many listeners you have. And best of all, it's completely free. So download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. So Maxwell Lord is obviously, when it comes to Wonder Woman, he's a significant character to have brought in because if we go to the comics, um, ultimately he gets to the point where he can be controlling uh, the minds or putting thoughts or whatnot into the minds of different people. And he ends up controlling Superman Um, at a point and convincing him that Wonder Woman is actually Doomsday and that she's killed Lois Lane Um, and then Wonder Wonder Woman Woman breaks his neck (laughs) exactly, Wonder Woman (laughs) has to snap the neck of Maxwell Lord which is being broadcast live on TV across the world and then changes the world's view of superheroes um, after that so it's a significant point in uh, comic book history you know for DC when that moment happens Turning uh, but he he, so, he had it coming. He shot Ted Cord. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so I, I'm not disputing he had it coming. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, but so to have him in the Wonder Woman movie is significant. Do you think? Obviously, we don't have Superman in it, but do you think that that could be the story arc that you're actually a, a variation of that story arc could be what you're going for uh, in this movie, and that she may actually kill. Um, Maxwell Lord, what are your thoughts? I would, I would say, I would say that, that's a possibility. What I'm interested in, it, I don't think it can be broadcast across the world because, according to like, be again, the trouble with doing a film when other films already come out after it is, according to BVS and, and Justice League, she wasn't a superhero up until she jumped in front of the bat plane and saved Batman. So no one should know who she is. So she's doing all this superhero stuff in secret or. Everyone's been mind wiped by the men in black afterwards. I don't know. Something is going on because. Yeah, that's my my thought as well. It's like, how do you reconcile what's going to happen in this film with what we already know about Wonder Woman and Batman yeah. and Superman? There's got to be something happening in there. And unless they go with the, the horrifically bad, it gets to the end of the film and everything was wiped out back to the way it was before and no one remembers anything. Yeah, it was all just a dream. Yeah, yeah. part of the crystal and the crystal destroys everything, gets reset. I don't know. Something. It's going to be something like that because I'm guessing she isn't Wonder Woman. And then she has to be, and then when obviously she finds out about Maxwell Lord or whatever, she puts the suit on. So it looks like at one point she's in the White House. So is Maxwell Lord president? Is that the thing that he changes? The thing he wants the most? Possibly. He, he becomes prime, president of the United States. I'm guessing. Don't know. Um, but yeah, she's like she's fighting in the White House. And she has to fight Cheetah there. So yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see. She's going to have to stay secret. No one's going to be able to find out about it. It's going to be a whole story. 
where the whole world's changed. So I'm curious, but yeah, it'd be interested. I mean, it'd be cool if he if she I don't know, if she does kill him. What does that mean? Maybe because Steve dies, she goes a bit crazy and, and does it. I mean, she doesn't mind killing. She killed I mean, she killed Hades and those other people. So yeah, I mean, it is possible she could do it, and that's how ultimately the the crystal or whatever the work that he's done is stopped. You know, and because uh, maybe he's doing uh, some more crazy stuff. Uh, you know, we find it during the movie. But the thing on that, just exactly like you just said, Stuart, is that well, it can't be the same as what we saw in the comics, where she does something and it's seen around the world, and everyone's all like, "Ooh, Wonder Woman, killer!" And like uh, that can't be the case because she's not known to the world. No, like exactly. you said, she keeps to the shadows until after Justice League. And that's part of the, res- um, the resolution that we saw at the end of um, the Whedon cut of Justice League, that uh, now she's finally out the shadows and she's talking to little kids and things. Um, she is this inspiration, this icon, uh, this symbol. Um, she can't, that kind of, yeah, it, it just, it, it means that you can't actually have her doing the televised killing of Maxwell Lord. But she might still kill him. Just not on camera. I mean, yeah. She, I mean, so, she's, a, she's a warrior. Because, there's no, there's no moral code or anything. She's a warrior. He's a bad guy. He's dead. Like, yeah. That would, that would not, so, would not, uh, not be a problem with that. Where like, Bat, where like Superman shouldn't kill. Like, I know Man of Steel. Everyone got like really annoyed that he killed Zod. And Batman's got a code where he shouldn't kill. But like Wonder Woman's a warrior, so I don't think she has that sort of code. No, but she did get taught yeah. about compassion from Steve in the first film. Because I know she went off. She went off to go and murder the guy she thought was Ares at the end of the first movie. But but then when it found out it wasn't, she didn't know what to do. And then Steve was like, "Well, we've got to make sacrifices." And then it seemed like she was doing. She's going down a different path. So it'd be interesting, like you say. But yeah, I don't know how this is going to fit in with the other films that we know. But still, from the footage we've seen, it looks pretty damn cool. Oh, yeah, know, this looks a... like it's going to be a, a real fun movie. I think it's fun that they've chosen to set it in the eighties. Um. The you know, that's thing, kind of <laughs> it's uh well we're all born in that decade, so it has to be the best. Um <laughs> so uh so yeah, I think it looks pretty cool. So I'm I'm excited to see it. I think it was the right move for them to delay the release of it um until next year when hopefully we're able to go back to movie theaters again. So I think that's good. Otherwise a big movie like that to just do a straight to digital release this year, I feel would be a shame you know yeah it would yeah so this seems like this is one of those movies where no 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 you you should see this on a big screen i want to see this on a big screen riding Um, lightning with a lasso on a big screen god damn it yeah (laughs) yeah (laughs) that will be awesome and (laughs) 3d so uh (laughs) and the panel discussions that we saw on it were um were pretty good pretty fun it was funny you saw linda carter suddenly appear on uh one of the panels um that was uh that was fun to have her in there and um yeah it was uh, i don't think it's really too much to discuss really right there from the panels unless it was saying it stood out for you guys i thought it was just no no just looking just really looking forward to film and saying is it a shame it's been delayed by great it should it should be seen in the big screen so next year when hopefully everything's like we can go to movie theaters again it's going to be great to see it um i can't wait indeed yeah. all right so, uh, so that's it for this episode of Legends of Podcasting. Uh, let us know what you thought of the trailer for Wonder Woman. You can find it. it we're pretty sure we shared it on our social channels. Um, if not, just look for it on YouTube. And uh, but leave us a comment on uh, anywhere where you find us on social media. Look for Legends of Podcasting. You can also find us on YouTube. And also, wherever you found this episode that you are listening to right now, click that subscribe button and you'll be notified whenever we have another episode available. So, um, that's all from me. That's all from me. That's it from me. Wonder Woman. (laughs) Wonder Woman. 1982. No, 84. 84. 84. The best year. 82 was the best year. That's nice. 2 to 1. 2 to 1, 84. Uh, eight, 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 eight. Let us know in the comments. Let us know in the comments which was the best. Which was the best year of the eighties?
the correct answer is a two.